I'm very happy to welcome you here. I can see that uh, many people, I know many people, and I know that really a very professional audience has got together and we can talk uh, professional language with these people and maybe actually discuss some narrow focus topics uh, which actually the format of Finnapolis does not always imply, but uh, actually the specifics of this section is that we can talk uh, narrow professional topics. Uh, this section will be dedicated to the digital auditing problems and we are planning with you to discuss the topic of the challenges and opportunities that the digitalization is providing and I think that uh, it would be interesting to discuss uh, the issues of increasing the effectiveness of the digital auditing because this is the term that sounds quite frequently in different pro pro companies with different degree of maturity are using the the digital technologies and you cannot say that the effectiveness of these opportunities is quite high is high enough and it actually does matter in order to use those uh, tools uh, to the full extent we need to check the effectiveness and there is a whole number of modern uh, tools uh, such as process mining and uh, uh, big data and others and I think my colleagues can share something very interesting with you from their experience and any activities on of this kind includes many risks many threats and uh, actually uh, it's uh, very good that we have uh, feedback and we should not be ashamed we should speak more loudly bring the mic close uh, so if it's too loud for some people then you can warn me and uh, it means that we are not concerned with the problems of the last row because it's really very sharp sound very loud and uh, harsh uh, on one's hearing uh, and we are actually encountering risks almost daily and every minute, uh, especially lately when there is an open war in the cyberspace and the auditing community is concerned with the reaction techniques and what they can be and uh, how we can react to those cyber risks uh, and uh, maybe the colleagues can help formulate it and my esteemed speakers will uh, help uh, around this uh, event. Next to me is Anna Davidova, many people know her, she is a partner in a trust technology company, if anyone is not used to this term, actually in the, pri in the past it's uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers auditing. Uh, so let's uh, welcome Anna and um, Anna Alton acts uh, as a consultant for the internal auditing of the central bank and we are actually very appreciative of her. Alex Chistakov, head of the internal auditing service of the Sberbank. Oleg also is uh, often um, a little bit um, not very confident because uh, sometimes uh, baffled because uh, it's not Sberbank any longer, it's Sber, just Sber. So if I made a mistake in the the um, uh, 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 title of your position or your company, also Mr. Danchikov is uh, someone uh, who is known, he is a media person but with a little bit of a negative uh, context uh, because Evgeny Danchikov is a minister from the government of Moscow, he is the head of the uh, main control uh, administration of the government of Moscow and actually he gave a hard time by his appearance on the TV screen to many citizens but he was performing 
a very important and very necessary, not always rewarding mission. And uh, we are actually very uh, thankful to him that we were able to go through this period. And that what is also pleasant is that unlike previous organizations, everything is stable here. Moscow is the capital and you are not changing the term and like St. Petersburg there is nothing to change it to and uh, I am actually quite confidently calling it the government of the city of Moscow, Mr. Igor Kalganov, uh, Director General of Q1 Group, uh, he is one of the major sponsors of uh, our event uh, of Finopolis and um, uh, trust me, uh, this company has many interesting concepts, interesting ideas that the audience would really like to hear when I say Gazprom Neft. Uh, I'm actually shivering, not just being a little bit shy, but they're actually shivering because... Um, uh, and uh, Galina Delvik, actually head of the internal auditing uh, directorate, uh, uh, control and risk management and, and internal ordering directorate, everything is in the hands of this wonderful lady and uh, it really causes awe and um, Actually, uh, I am actually going against all the principles and standards of auditing activity and uh, so the audience may actually blame us. So everything should be assessed on the basis of the efficiency and only the efficiency is the benchmark, is the main uh, guideline and everybody know that you, are, that you are working effectively, efficiently and the last Last person is Mr. Andrei Ivanov, head of the uh, Yandex Cloud Companies Department uh, for the uh, cloud services. Uh, and everybody knows uh, Yandex Cloud and uh, the first thing you will see is Yandex and uh, so uh, there are no extra comments, no extra presentations are necessary. So this kind of a composition will help us run a very interesting and a very informative and uh, like a knowledge generating talk and uh, we haven't meant for several years and there have been some objective reasons for that for several times we tried to run this event in Sochi but actually those are the reasons that have a global nature it's uh, the global pandemic which has prevented us from meeting but also I would like to nominate those reasons to see what conclusions uh, the world and the economy and Russia are encountering and that's not only the global pandemic and also economic decline and high inflation rate and uh, changes in the climate and the geopolitical and uh, social tensions which uh, the presence of which is obvious for everyone we don't we need to be persuaded it actually predetermines the development of our country but it doesn't uh, by any means uh, stop it and uh, more and more role a great and greater role are played in this development by the digital services uh, digital processes which lead to global and fundamental changes in the business model and culture and the digital transformation is actually being integrated today with all kinds of the activities all its aspects including auditing and the auditing by itself is also being transformed and that kind of a transformation of the auditing it touches upon the entire life cycle of auditing including its focus on big data and using the new technologies and uh, the, also the automation of the routine processes and more flexible models of personnel management and it all brings the uh, everyone uh, uh, to changing in the relationship between people. We don't have to sit in the offices, uh, we can work uh, 
remotely and we are actively using this practice, uh, elements of this practice can still be used uh, and um, that uh, also so we can set tasks uh, new, we can organize uh, remote, organize remote uh, workstations uh, uh, and uh, smartphones and video conferences, again, all kinds of messengers are, are actually helping in that. And uh, it actually has uh, led to the uh, remote operation of the teams having dispersed teams and the role of auditing in this new digital space where we will we'll be located in the future it will uh, we will be able to talk about it today and uh, actually uh, before our discussion i would like to uh, give some data uh, dedicated to the current status of internal auditing in russia and uh, uh, this was the, uh, there was a survey done by leading auditing and consulting companies for uh, over 100 people from internal auditing services of the Russian companies. And those data are compatible with the data from 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, and uh, we can compare and see what is the dynamics and what are the trends in the development of our occupation, our profession lately. So I will just uh, nominate figures. 72% of those uh, screens are using data analysis sources, so that's quite a bit. Uh, if we look back, it's about more than several years ago, 64% are using data visualization tools, 63% are using the digital auditing, and 8% are using GRC class solutions. And um, in that connection, I have a question to one of the participants of this study, a person who actually has a very profound knowledge of those digits, of those figures, uh, that's Anna, because uh, she is one of the author of that uh, survey. And actually we have a few questions, not one question. Firstly, what all uh, questions uh, does, what uh, problems does the auditing have, whether the internal auditing services are ready for this kind of a digital transformation? from the point of view of this analysis, your analysis, your study, and whether we can do the digital transformation of auditing in the conditions of unprecedented sanctions, because they actually quite seriously limit our uh, opportunities when it comes to the software and hardware as well. Uh, so uh, maybe in the course of your short presentation you could answer, you would answer those complicated issues. Hi colleagues, thank you very much Valeria for a chance to participate in this discussion and of course digitalization of businesses seriously affects the internal auditing and uh, the profession and how the internal auditing services are working. So we can actually single out uh, so two key uh, tra trends. Uh, so if all toolkits are not working, and also expectations from internal auditing, because from the point of view of the expectations, we expect that the speed will uh, lower for the checkups, and the number of uh, targets for the checkups will increase, and the depth of uh, studying of the issue will be it will be deeper. So it will be almost 100% of the population if we look about five years back. Actually, the two key topics that have been discussed in the internal auditors community, it was whether the new technologies will be able to fully replace the internal auditors. Probably not, um, because they are helping the internal auditors, they are enriching the available array of tools, but they do not fully replace the humans. And uh, second, uh, Thirdly, many internal auditors actually expect that there will be specialized software which is created for the internal auditing purposes in order to, after its implementation, we will digitize the work of the practitioners and change the course of the checkups which are being uh, used. And of course, it's difficult to create the software because the ecosystem of uh, the software which is used by this or that are organization are difficult and it's hard to create 
the product which would be comfortable for everyone in terms of its use and for internal auditors it makes sense to look at what's being used by the organization and they very seriously depend on the level of digitalization of the company where they work and what kind of software products are being used so if we are looking at the most progressive Russian companies and also international companies the most attractive uh, thing are dashboards and process mining and those tools are the ones that enable the internal auditing to access the qualitatively new level and it's also important to look at how the tools are working with the data and the efficiency, the possibility of their visualization and simplicity of their use. The simplicity of the use and maturity of the product and in order to answer uh, uh, Valeria's question, yes we can work on the conditions of the sanctions, there is a huge number of Russian software products which help us, the Sber process mining, watchman, uh, process uh, and physiology and foresight, uh, loginom to work with big data, so there is a huge number of tools and they are used by the progressive internal auditing practices in Russia, it is important to remember that the new tools actually apply the requirements to the competence of internal auditors who are working uh, practically. So who is actually a good internal auditor? It's somebody who knows what an audit is and knows the sectoral specifics uh, of the industry where he or she works and also its understanding of the IT systems and being able to work with the quality of the data. Uh, and uh, um, not uh, every uh, auditor should become a good software developer. But the combination of good sectoral experience and uh, being able to work with big bulks of data is something that can take the uh, of, uh, function of the new auditing to a qualitatively new level. So uh, I think this is a moment when every general auditor can help one access the uh, qualitatively new level in one's practice and this can help uh, uh, develop, help one develop. So in uh, Anna's presentation we could uh, have seen, we could see that uh, digitalization implies the process of the implementation of certain system of the data processing and that uh, enables one to effectively use the allocated resources on my side I would like to add that automated data, co data collection uh, opens new prospects for improving the uh, data management control method and it actually enhances the opportunities of auditing but also it gives principally new opportunities for the second level of control and uh, also it's very important that it yields the opportunity to increase the pace of the work, the precision of information collection and the depth of using the analytics and uh, uh, the completeness, the uh, coverage of the access uh, that we have to different bulks of data and of course uh, basically tentatively those systems can be divided into robotization, basic analytics, cognitive analytics AI uh, and uh, machine learning and all those words are very well known to Spur Bank and uh, to Spur companies uh, because we are very frequently uh, studying this advanced experience and bringing in our own practice and promoting it in the market and uh, it is there is uh, nothing bad in some companies being the leaders, leads of flagships in this process. And uh, speaking about state monopoly, it can be useful. So it's a certain kind of a nice breaker which cleans the path for other ships. And it also use can be useful for the state economy. And uh, 
for the our service, this kind of internal auditing service, uh, there are many specific difficulties inside the companies, and to what extent can we rely on the developments that exist? How it's perceived by the management, what is the support on the part of the managers to the activity of the auditors, because the more certain structures understand, uh, because uh, actually the more is exposed to auditing, the more risk the organization is running. So maybe may it would be good to hear about this entire set of comp complicated problems given the, all those modern methods of working with analytical data, I guess. Uh, so yes, uh, I'll thank you for this opportunity to share some of my experience. Uh, the approach that uh, we are implementing now, we call it data drilling approach. We are not trying to clash the risk oriented, clash it with the risk oriented uh, types of activity. We do not uh, have a certain cult and uh, actually the useful toolkit should be used, should be utilized. Uh, and uh, actually remembering Anna's question whether the internal auditor should also be a software developer. Our answer is not only should, but also he should be a certified developer and 100% of our uh, staff, auditor staff are data scientists, data, data analysts and uh, related specialists. So our internal auditing service is not a traditional one, it works on the basis of different standards. Uh, first of all, I would like to actually briefly touch upon this. In the first place, the prerequisites were that we cannot work in the old style. We have around 2,000 processes and they are so complicated that the business itself uh, can, does not understand them end to end. So we have uh, groups of uh, thousands of people who are servicing those uh, processes and make design of them in parts. Uh, uh, they are digital processes, uh, multi-channel processes. Everybody is using elements of AI and other models and understanding of this process for an internal auditor. In terms of the expertise level, it's very difficult and uh, the processes also are changing. Of course, agile pro developing uh, it's uh, uh, we're, so we do pro prom development and uh, different have a different release uh, policy all, a lot of pilot uh, trials and uh, a elf and beta testing and b testing uh, so we have a predictable map of risks and stable processes i mean we actually it doesn't always work this kind of uh, Predictable model does not always work uh, in our case. So we are trying to go away from the assessment and open the brain for the insights which one can obtain with the help of uh, data analysis and uh, actually uh, everything is well uh, done with the data and there are uh, divisions which uh, uh, Skoltsberg data which is um, actually working as data generation data factory they provide for ecosystem compatibility try to ensure ecosystem compatibility and quality of data and uh, Sber data is uh, actually ahead of everybody in that respect we actually uh, using the data a lot, getting all the insights from that, those sets of data and that's actually our main function we actually single out uh, 
by process mining, graph ma- mining, graph mining, as, uh, related tools, we single out the uh, insights uh, because sometimes businesses uh, do not have this type of analytical capability uh, and uh, they want to get good, better client experience and KPI and do not have uh, enough uh, potential for side businesses and we actually very good at diagnostics of the processes and uh, we can also do it for others we have checked uh, 450 percent with uh, our bank and 350 processes are subject for improvement uh, based on the results of the checkup uh, so our service is uh, acting as a driver of changes the driver of the improvements and why it is uh, our business is taking those uh, decisions very simply because all our insights are based on data there are hundred percent selections very understandable very transparent toolkits and we are transferring data very promptly for to the teams that can verify our findings and our explanations our hypothesis so it's quite a seamless uh, production process uh, in between auditing and uh, actually start tackling those problems and uh, we have actually over nine months have proven improvements on 254 processes which means that we verify based on the same mechanism that real changes have happened or they are only on paper so we have this data drilling approach it allows us uh, to validate very well the uh, changes that have happened and what we need actually is if you have a lot of data if you have access to it that's the main thing secondly it's the tools toolkit not people people nowadays is uh, uh, are like a uh, sub tools they are not that important if you understand what you use to process then you, you or it's actually secondary competitors then you look for the relevant team members uh, so it's a collection at Sbur bank a dream plan uh, sql so we uh, are using all vendor independent solutions and we are hiring people from the graduates of uh, technology institutions and in three months they understand whether we can work further or not and then after a year or two one two years they go up the career their career per track and our service is entirely based in good locations it's Kazan Novosibirsk Khabarovsk, St. Petersburg, so we don't have any problems in that respect. Uh, basically, this is uh, how internal auditing is arranged with uh, Sberbank. And I think for Sberbank it's quite good, quite applicable. I have to, I can't but uh, inquire and maybe I'm abusing my right as a moderator, but still you have uh, huge uh, resources, I won't nominate what kind of a human resource you dispose of and many companies do not have uh, that number. Uh, for internal auditing, but of course Sberbank is a huge company and you dispose of a lot of uh, tools, a lot of uh, automation, different types of automation for your processes. So basically it means that uh, you can develop the auditing methodology, the KPIs and uh, create new forms and uh, in the auditing community uh, um, including the council on auditing activity uh, 
There is this implementation of such a new form as consulting in the auditing practice. What is your attitude to this problem? My position is that there should not be universal approaches and every company determines what is more important for it on the current stage because our work is aimed at the implementation of the strategic goals of the company but the fact that you have already passed the second line of defense and you have detected the number of faults and violations it's uh, more than the second line and you are solving those problems and uh, what do you think at Sberbank to the topic of consultancy in the course of auditing so issuing from the company structure can you cope with it or do others uh, can others do it better for us consulting is a prohibited topic uh, mostly because we don't understand anything we are not involved with business we don't know how to do this or that business better we are good at diagnostics from the point of view of diagnostics we are the best we are better than businesses because we have more access we have good resources good toolkit good time and uh, we can show some problems yet all our instructions they sound as follows or solve the problem but the design of the problem solution belongs to the owners of the processes and we have nothing to share our data engineers who work for a year or two they know something about the data they know something about businesses and we verify some processes without knowing anything about the process there are no hypotheses we don't know how this or that sector is working and we cannot give the advice on the improvements but as diagnose for diagnosis we are developing the competences and that's like i said it's one of the specifics of the Sberbank and the specifics of our functions it was not by chance that i answered the ask this provocative questions because there are many approaches all uh, uh, approaches uh, have the right uh, to live and with the central bank uh, our consultants consultancy is more and more demanded but it's a different specifics of the business different set of business processes and different set of tasks and uh, in that uh, respect uh, the establishing of uh, some kind of general approach is common for the entire market uh, as it often happens and then some kind of a blind uh, copying of the so-called best practices probably not the best option for the auditor community because every company should be issuing from its own specifics its own internal needs uh, what the company needs uh, from the point of view of its processes and select the set of tools which is the most effective one and in this respect uh, I understand the position of uh, such a company as Sber, uh, which has a lot of technical possibilities, so opportunities. Uh, so, uh, therefore, our next speaker is Mr. Evgeny Danchikov. I would like to. I'm very happy to give floor to him. He is a representative not of an auditor company, but of a control service of the government of Moscow, which is working very effectively. And we, on many occasions, had a chance uh, to see that it's a very effective structure, and its effectiveness is built on the application of a big, of a large number of modern methods, modern approach. There is a very high level of automation, and uh, he is a constant participant on many scientific uh, events and he uh, makes a lot of input into the development of our methodology even though it's a public administration public authority body so it would be very interesting to listen to him uh, it would be very interesting good afternoon dear colleagues good afternoon valerie thank you for uh, 
the uh, introduction and uh, of course at the beginning you have scared us a little bit but uh, uh, now that uh, after we have found many people now we are returning those penalties in the framework of the COVID amnesty so we are always have a lot of work so maybe you can uh, can you show my presentation and from the point of view of uh, what uh, Valery like Valery said uh, in the framework of Oleg's presentation that uh, there is certain specifics related to every auditing structure uh, there are no universal tools and I absolutely agree with that and I think uh, still that uh, we should uh, borrow best practices and exchange best practices, pass them over, and our concept, the philosophy of developing uh, work as a, a control division of the government of Moscow is to pay as much attention as possible to the corporate sector, because the corporate sector is the most advanced one in the field of the digital auditing, the using of the modern digital technologies and in the framework of introducing the Sberg Bank model, Alec has shown how cool and how efficient it is in their case and in that respect the public sector is lagging behind even though the volume of the tasks and the volume of the funds that are disposed by the public sector is comparable or even greater if we take the entire state budgets, of course, it exceeds any uh, public, any exchequer company or private company, uh, so or public company, of course, uh, uh, the budget of Moscow is uh, 3.5 billion rubles, and of course, the volume of the transactions that are help, uh, happening uh, is, makes us think at how we should uh, uh, build the most effective control process, and we can now arrange this landscape or this model for ourselves, which has been taking shape uh, historically, and it includes three key units. Uh, uh, the control, which is actually the basis, uh, and it has been uh, uh, embedded in the legislation, we see it as a fully automated process, which can be completely represented in the form of algorithms, and we can make control points with the minimum participation of the humans, minimum participation of the auditors. It's quite a complex work, uh, uh, you have to work uh, carefully, but it's quite clear we are not auditors per se, but we, are, we seek to become auditors. And in terms of our philosophy, because we see it as our main task, uh, uh, to help the controlled, uh, our controlled bodies, the subjects of our control, to assess the risks uh, and those uh, trends, they are the most demanded ones in our work and our today's activity. And the third one that we consider the most promising one, and we have already proven it in practice, it's consulting, and consulting helps us to uh, eliminate most of the violations and work directly with the control services to see what could be the wrong algorithm, how to eliminate them, and how to with the least losses to achieve the goals or the result which is being set in front of us and in front of the sectoral divisions or structures. So, um, coming back to digitalization, from which uh, the work has started in Moscow and the city of Moscow, we have actually moved uh, 
gone quite a way. We started from the digital landscape and we very well understood that if we don't create a base for digitalization, then no matter what modern technologies we would use, it's not going to be used because we will not be able to cover the entire city. So uh, now uh, there is a huge number of po uh, free Wi-Fi hotspots, very cheap, mo the cheapest mobile internet in Europe, and this enables us to, in the first place, use video monitoring cameras uh, and use AI and use cloud solutions and connect uh, all our sectoral information systems into one and uh, continue the work on building in the control points and uh, create uh, type of ecosystems. So, for example, the procurement ecosystem is... Uh, you probably won't be able to see those arrows from the diagram or uh, make anything out of those arrows, but it's actually an, an intertwined, interrelated system which helps uh, to plan the purchasing uh, the procurement and monitor the purchasing transactions and actually take stock, uh, make accounting of the procurement and use IoT, for example, the utilization of snow, the snow melting uh, points, snow melting stations, so you can actually measure with the laser meters the volume of snow, which is uh, to carry it to the snow melting stations and pay in the framework of the uh, of that operation, pay for that relevant amount. So it's a precursor of a smart contracting, but still it basically allows us to have this uh, uh, forerunner of a smart court contracting practice and besides uh, today, uh, the, um, today's auditing is actually consists of several key uh, components. It's a collection and processing of data, forming algorithms, and then in interpreting of the analysis results. And in the past, it was a lot easier. Uh, the person had to just uh, come and count the bags of sugar or flour and uh, just uh, scroll through the stacks of papers, uh, uh, bills, etc. But uh, now it's working with uh, great bulks of data and information systems. And of course, on the one hand, like Anna said, it allows us uh, uh, a um, uh, faster speed. Uh, so, for example, in purchasing, we already control 100% of purchasing. In the past, uh, it was at the most uh, 30%. Uh, but from the point of view of using the technologies, there are no problems here. And uh, what problems arise is first, of course, it's data itself. In the corporate sector, it may be a little bit easier, but in the public sector, Converting the data to the digital format means that means uh, to determine how, who are the sources, what are the master systems, how the methodology will work, uh, and uh, how the reference books, gu guidebooks will be put together. So it's a big and diligent work, and the purchasing. The um, actually the reference book on the data for purchasing in the city of Moscow was being established for in the, for in the course of five years, uh, and we've made uh, five uh, items before and three hundred uh, positions over the last two years. So it's all accelerating, but it's a very complex, very diligent work to be done. And from the point of view of the legislation, and uh, you really need to work with it. And another unit, another part is the work algorithms, uh, sequences. We need to determine their quality, assess their quality, and we are constantly working with the auditors, processing the sectoral auditing systems, and we try to 
develop an approach to the certification of those models that would enable us to uh, assess them and also the interpretation of the results and there are many tools in the market which allow us to do the analytics to make it a good quality analytics and the question about the adaptation of those tools is actually the the tasks of the government, the public sector, and a very important issue is the personnel, the human resources. For example, what we do is uh, we have two types of human resources. We have the uh, inspectors. Uh, who uh, we try to learn them to uh, teach them to work on BI systems and we have analysts who are to uh, understand more about programming and uh, who know more about the technical process uh, and they uh, f are involved with the analytics uh, and they actually assist to do a lot of uh, routine assistance work uh, in order to help the auditors and uh, actually for the public sector for us those events are quite important because first we borrow all the best we adapt it to our needs and now I would like to ask Valeri I think that uh, we should not uh, forget the public sector uh, and that's a basis for our further development. Uh, thank you. And uh, it should be noted that uh, during the past years the public sector in Russia has made a huge step forward from the point of view of digitalization of its processes and uh, the creating automated control systems and we can see what a huge work has been undertaken by the government and Ministry of the Digital Development and the government of Moscow as well. It's always at the forefront of those processes. So I think it's an expertise that we are studying very actively and uh, between the uh, chief auditor of the central bank and the government of Moscow there is always a close contact and uh, we try to attend the same events we want to share the experience even though there are different specifics and it's not the only function of yours nevertheless there is this kind of a mutual uh, permeation and interviewing of uh, of the knowledge and experience that you have so thank you for the scientific and methodological work that you are running in this respect and also now I would like to move over not to a different topic but uh, slightly specify our conversation because previously there were the leaders the front runners of our um, a control system and economy and uh, Sberbank and the government of Moscow and all other participants have their own expertise that they can share uh, but uh, to never greater extent the companies based on the market leaders experience they start to understand what modern technologies for control and analysis such as process mining uh, they should use and process uh, uh, mining is uh, doing it based on the digital footprint and uh, we are not pioneering this effort but this effort but we are trying to use the results of the activities of other companies and uh, uh, in that connection, I would like to very happily give floor to the representatives of uh, other co of a company which is one of the leaders of IT developments, which proposes solutions in process mining. It's uh, Ivan Kalganov. Ivan, can you share what you know in this field? Uh, 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 Thank you very much for uh, this uh, 
a opportunity to speak, but uh, since you are in such uh, a company of professional officers, there is this uh, uh, slight alert, uh, alarm, uh, which always feel, uh, yes, uh, we have a huge team which creates the digital products, uh, uh, 15,000 employees who create uh, pro, pro software for telecom and banking and other sectors, and we have solutions for process mining, we didn't know that uh, the auditors would use it, we always position that it's for uh, business units, and now that we were preparing as well for the session, we tried to look through the auditor's eyes at that process, and now I think there is a quite a powerful digital revolution which is going on from the auditing point of view, and we know how far the colleagues in this Burbank have moved, and we know that uh, digitalization has a certain patchwork nature, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, if we're looking at a small or not so small, a comp no, a large or not so large company in Russia, the access of information system, and we try to collect them, put them together, collect some data storage facilities, and there is import replacement that comes in place, and uh, now there is need to abandon the foreign developed solutions, uh, and a lot of uh, information systems have to be replaced, and in that respect, the story with the process mining, if it's uh, separately installed and integrated with a lake pool of data or a swamp of data, uh, if it's not turned into a, a lake, and uh, with these slogans to put together a separate picture of the world, which is of critical importance. And uh, from the point of view of planning and working at the efficiency, but it's all important. But apart from that, it's also important for the auditing and digital auditing when the processes uh, inside the company are becoming very visible, as if it's happening on your palm in front of you. Uh, so uh, when uh, you are doing regular audits or uh, ad hoc audits based on some facts or uh, events. Uh, there is movement towards real time because of the cyber attacks and cyber risks. Uh, you need to react uh, to some processes very promptly, find some faults very promptly, and then we are moving from log analysis and uh, creating digital uh, duplicates, uh, digital twins. We will probably turn our solutions towards the auditors to have specialized interfaces, specialized tools to run the analysis of the company's activities and prompt reaction, and we, among other things, are moving towards process discovery when, to help the auditors, come, comes machine learning and artificial intelligence and helps us abandon manual work in order to, while in the in the past, uh, it's actually a manually processing and analyzing data, and it's a possibility to build processes which uh, don't have to be documented inside the company, so regulated inside the companies, but if one of the divisions inside the company every day is performing some operation, we uh, very precisely see that there is some process that goes on, and uh, uh, now we live in the mode of uh, import restrictions on special military operations cyber attacks, etc. And we encounter a huge number of processes which are implemented without any regulation because it just has to be done like that and then we will describe it and uh, finalize it. So when we come from the mining to discovery, process mining to process discovery, when the systems helps us to describe and to analyze the chains of events which are happening inside the company, this uh, seems like it uh, will give give us a new push uh, towards a new growth point, when the internal auditing will be able to become a reliable partner, prompting us that a new process has come into being, and it needs to be documented, it needs to be assessed, and all the history around this process needs to be assessed as well. We are forming the function of auditing uh, uh, of a business partner, and we aspire to doing it inside our own company, because given the large geographical spread and uh, huge production units and a number of huge number of legal entities. The problem of, of internal auditing are quite complex on the solutions that we have implemented with the largest banks and 
telecom sector uh, allow us that uh, uh, the uh, motion from mining to process discovery to using machine learning and artificial intelligence and uh, having uh, specialized Russian tools that uh, can help us to radically change uh, the auditing and that helps us to uh, faster move uh, to becoming more transparent and because of that more effective. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, it's a very interesting trend, a very interesting topic, so I do not want this to be actually uh, limit ourselves to one input, uh, one contribution from a participant. There is interesting practical experience and this practical experience is implemented by Galina and uh, for us uh, it's more like uh, representatives of the financial sector and for the financial sector we know that there is there are a little bit uh, con have a little bit of a condescending attitude they can consider themselves very advanced um, uh, they, we know that they uh, match the best international standards especially in terms of using high tech and uh, but lately we understood that it's actually not exactly so so in the work of our uh, council on the auditing activity and risk management and internal control which keeps working and works quite effectively the real uh, economic sector has started to take part and because uh, gas and oil is our everything in Russia I would like uh, uh, if you want to be said about this problem by a representative of this our everything, uh, Ms. Galina. Galina has undertaken a lot of work for the analysis of processes with the help of process mining and uh, we try uh, to promote this work in the market and uh, we try, you can check how you uh, build the work with the business divisions in terms of finding different anomalies and uh, find, uh, using the procedures of process mining. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm, would probably start with using process mining, not for auditing, but for digitalization. I think uh, that uh, under the conditions of uh, the industrial sector or economics, digitalization is uh, quite uh, tumultuous and uh, it's not automation. It's not just uh, converting the pro conversion of the process uh, to IT programs that actually changes business processes that makes new processes which uh, are drastically different very different from the old ones and process mining is one of its main tasks is to help the business to see how uh, the um, new processes are uh, made and so the first thing I will probably speak about uh, real things the first thing is uh, you can see the gaps in the processes because uh, they see the gap uh, in uh, the process and they give recommendations and uh, they want the process to be in tag uh, they can make the process in tag uh, besides it uh, shows how the business is using this or that process which transactions actually exist and which exist only with the IT programs and which are not being used and that's also very important and besides if uh, uh, you have created an MNA or micro technical tasks for the process, then you can look at uh, what you had in theory when you are drafting a new process and what you have an MMD and uh, add an MD uh, and you can color it into colors and see what it looks like and how it's deviating 
from what you have come up with jointly with the IT experts. So this is, I think, one mission of process mining which may not require serious analytical inputs. Uh, uh, so I am now listening to my colleague who is implementing a program, yet I think making a program, making a software program is class is a classic thing, but what it means to implement it, why process mining often dies, why it doesn't uh, take off, because we need analytical specialists, we need people who can very well sort out not only business processes, but also they have a certain analytical abilities and it happened so in our company that actually auditors and uh, internal control specialists are actually exactly the people who can show how the tools really work, what benefits they bring and to see the build the IT system of internal control, so it works about the auditing. For auditing it's just a gift, because six years ago when I saw Solonis, I said I do want this, this is our future, our common future, and of course there are some trans it's a transaction system, we cannot always enter it, uh, we cannot uh, uh, enter it with our uh, autom process automation department. It's actually also, it's what process mining is, it's 100% selection. And the most difficult thing for the auditor is to determine the uh, selection and make extrapolation. Of course, uh, I'm talking about the real sector, but for the banks, uh, you're always a little bit snobbish. It's everything is automated, uh, it looks beautiful, but still, it's not so easy. So the bank is actually work well, but on the basis of what are you making your conclusions? What uh, what uh, <laughs> grades do you give? You have red, uh, uh, yellow, green, and red color. Uh, so what? Uh, uh, so the business looks at the conclusions. What do we have more red or yellow? Because red is in the auditing. It instantly means that it's a problem for the top managers. But again, for the top managers, depending on what uh, or facility you are checking, but I think it might be interesting for you, because we have a risk-oriented uh, auditing, because we have a huge site, huge ground, the resources 80 people, and it's not enough. So, next time I will tell you, coming back to process mining, you know that it's a good thing, for the auditing and any auditor is very happy to work uh, with uh, selection and uh, work with good, good data aggregations. But uh, with me, for my division, uh, an important uh, goal uh, is to have an internal control system based on process mining. And uh, I think that in certain bottlenecks, in certain risk spots, uh, it's good to have automated controls, it can be dashboards, it can be analytical uh, showcases, uh, jointly with business, uh, because uh, you have to have a deep analyst who knows how to approach to risk uh, identification of the risks, you look at the KPIs of the process, you see what risks are preventing uh, to achieve them and we put certain KIRs and uh, we try to business the business to make the role models and the higher the risk the higher the control uh, it can be also steer controlled by steering groups and control on the highest level so this is actually everything that I wanted to say when the pra as far as the practice is concerned thank you very much uh, also speaking uh, though Galina is from real economy sector like 
which can always uh, teach a little bit the central bank and she is a participant of our several uh, meetings she is a very active participant uh, and the snobs from the financial sector actually are listening very carefully to representatives of the economy's real sector. And uh, it's not uh, limited with this narrow framework of one hour. No, I'm a nasty person. Yeah, you know, you're not that I like to ask uh, tough questions and I like to get feedbacks and to understand how it can be uh, sort it out. Uh, auditors cannot be kind to everyone. It's really a nasty, mean person. What are you talking about? Apart from the possibilities uh, that we get due to information resources, we also generate a huge number of risks. I will not elaborate on that too much, but cyber risks uh, is really a huge threat and uh, uh, of course, we shouldn't be uh, speaking in that uh, along those lines, but uh, of course, uh, another colleague that will speak now is uh, uh, working with many companies, it's a well-known company and uh, they work with uh, cloud platforms and I have uh, a few questions to him given this short time that we have left. What technologies is Yandex Cloud using to reduce those risks, how to protect the value, the high value of the big data and everything that we create? For uh, and how to avoid uh, uh, to exclude the impact of swindlers and abusers, and what uh, control media is Yandex Cloud using? Cloud using, but we are pressed for time. So soon our new participants are going to enter this room. I will try to answer as briefly as possible of, uh, with the appearance of the cloud technologies nothing changed uh, uh, and uh, because our technology is not quantum physics uh, the, uh, uh, the earth is still turning around the sun and security uh, systems are monitoring security like it always was uh, to avoid the swindlers and uh, other abusers and uh, of course it's a new class of systems and uh, uh, for auditing systems, they uh, contain uh, uh, new problems, new bottlenecks, new headaches, for, uh, the clouds, clou cloud technologies, sorry, not auditing technologies, uh, and uh, they have their own vulnerabilities, and in terms of the responsibility for the safety, when the companies were managing their own from IT systems, they thought they are controlling everything, even though they are not making microelectronics and operation systems, but still, and of course the software is not always uh, written in-house uh, by far. Uh, so this division started even uh, to be even greater because when you are using the clouds on the side of the provider there is a lot more responsibility because uh, you are responsible for all the infrastructure, for all the services that are represent the client side, of course it's hard uh, for the security department to monitor at all because they are used to control it on for themselves on their side uh, but uh, so now because uh, we started to both worldwide and in Russia to introduce different types of auditing 
and uh, about the observance of difference and the safety standards and uh, to uh, show the colleagues uh, how it should be done on the provider's side uh, to show it to them and it creates a certain level of trust however the standards and requirements there is quite a few of them and we are aspiring to reaching a high and higher level and we have dozens of auditing running every year decided to cyber security and some of them are needed to the clients for example PCI ICS which uh, is needed for processing of the payment card data if the client wants uh, to use the payment cards on the cloud uh, then uh, both client and provider have to abide by the standards and dozens of auditing per year is a huge load of uh, not only on the auditors of themselves and the compliance team but also on the developed who lapas who every time have to tell uh, what the service has to do where they put the logs how the data protection system is arranged and the control and protection of uh, the access so in order to improve the situation on our side, we are trying to put together the requirements of those standards in terms of in a kind of blogs and to go through this um, uh, correspondence requirements and match meeting those requirements. Uh, so it's a small but uh, quite a, a significant innovation which enables to save uh, a significant number of resources and few people in the market do it because it's hard to arrive to that and uh, we haven't gone through it yet but we are in the process of course you cannot live with auditing alone because from the point of view of real cyber risks you can just uh, predict where the problem is and what you need to be afraid of but in order to cope with the cyber attacks you need to do a lot prior to their beginning and here we are using using the approach of the so-called built-in security because uh, our platform by 95 percent it's uh, written in house and it's kind of for that because we have many developers and we put in all the aspects related to safety uh, security at the development station that allows us to use less of the add-ons uh, uh, security add-ons and that uh, allows us uh, to do it on the level of our systems uh, and that allows us to cope with the threats that arise and we are not only taking care about ourselves and our platforms but also our users who are using it on their level like I said before in the area of uh, their responsibility they uh, uh, are protecting their own data and uh, their, their, their platform is providing various services and possibilities for providing security which the user can utilize depending on the scenario and the data which uh, uh, are processed on our platform and this is that option can be chosen uh, and if I you have a minute you I can share with you about one of those services it is uh, related uh, to uh, this is actually taking care of the industry of certain industry and uh, if we remember about it uh, actually automation what does the internal automation do uh, one component is talking to the other component the different secrets are used for that because uh, one of the components needs to authorize the other component and some often those secrets are left in code and they get, uh, they get to public repositories and the abusers find it really easily and then the company are hacked and in order to uh, oppose that to counter that we have uh, this human factor we have made a service which can detect uh, the publicly accessible secrets related to our platform which the clients have forgotten to eliminate from the code and notify uh, the clients that their secrets are either are either in the search index or public repositories so you should pay attention to that uh, so thank you very much. Briefly, it's briefly, but quite extensive at the same time. Our time is running out and I need to make some conclusion. 
because this is how it should be done. I'm actually prepared to do that, but it's such a multifaceted topic that uh, uh, with all my uh, ability of being concise and brief, uh, still uh, I will, it will take too long and we will be kicked out of the room. Uh, so, But still I want to ask one question which is provoked by Oleg. And, uh, because uh, with uh, snobbishness, which is uh, very common with the Sberbank, uh, he said that the tools uh, are uh, rated third. Uh, uh, so it may be rated three or four, and many people. Uh, there are a lot of. There are so many people uh, here who are very attractive, uh, very lovable, uh, and you said that the processes are more important than people, and there will be only robots on the servers blinking with lights. So I cannot actually picture myself. Uh, and uh, that capacity, so there is a brief question to everyone, two to three words, because uh, uh, so what do you see, how do you see the face of an auditor, will there be human auditors at all in the new world of IT technologies? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, actually, uh, we would like to keep a leg. We want to keep a leg, uh, the auditor from Sberbank, a human, a human auditor to, to, to retain uh, at least one human auditor. Uh, the, the role of uh, humans uh, is to arrange the hypothesis in the proper way. Uh, of course, you can uh, the uh, software can work with pools of data, but uh, the. Humans need to arrange it and set the task, uh, tasks appropriately. Mm, yes, now there are more uh, trust-based technologies, but still, I think in the nearest future and in the present, in the real sector of economics, the humans are everything, everything speaking about the remote future. Uh, I, for me, the picture is as follows, that people like Alec will be necessary, uh, they will be controlling themselves uh, and uh, they will be working on blockchain principle. And uh, so there is an expertise of digitalization and automation and uh, of course it's easier to digitize and replace by AI the routine work. So first it will, the AI will approach uh, uh, gradually the middle level, but still the people in command positions, it's hard to replace them. The people who determine, well, Alec, have pity for your colleagues. Everything is on our hands if we prove that we are useful and valuable and it should be uh, sensible. Then we will stay. Evgeny, in the, in the capacity of whom? Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the government of Moscow needs to provide for employment. I think uh, we have a huge deficit in the real sector, in the housing sector. Everybody gets a shovel, uh, a rack. And, uh, but coming back to the control uh, function, uh, uh, of course it's important uh, and uh, it cannot be otherwise and we are scaring our specialists with that, uh, but uh, we are still actually confident that uh, the humans come first and any technologies can replace routine processes but the tasks of humans is becoming more important. Without that we cannot go anywhere and in that respect we cannot anyhow replace the humans. Andrei, I'm also looking quite optimistically into that because I think AI cannot develop itself. So therefore the developers will always have some job and we're talking about other specialization, I would agree with my colleagues to the effect that routine calling processes will be automated but the main specialization will keep developing and go further. Thank you very much, dear colleagues.
Dear participants of this section, we should uh, thank our colleagues and thank them for not closing the perspective, because we will we will still have a prospect of meeting in a year, and uh, we have a full impression that if I'm allowed to uh, be the moderator for the next meeting. I got an impression that I will be just talking to robots and computers, but you will stay, but you will stay. And uh, in all uh, cases, we will leave some legislative niche, some statutory niche for ourselves. We'll describe that procedure and we will be at its head and we would like to see the smart uh, and kind and uh, uh, very uh, nice looking uh, persons. So with this I would like to say goodbye, thank you.